Hey, I'm Kev Care, and welcome back to MHGP3 and our final round of the season. But before we get into that, let's just sum things up before we head into that final round and see what's happening in the MX2 Championship as Jeffrey Hernans on the KTM has won the championship by Country Mole, head of Jeremy Siwa on the Suzuki and Bernard Patrol on the Yamaha who are tied for second place. Then we got the Brit Max Anstey Anstey on the Hasvana for the Hasvana runner 15 points back for that battle for third. In a very solid fourth though he's way ahead of Brian Bogier is in fifth on the KTM. He's 14 points ahead of Dylan Fernandez on the Kazaki. Then we got Alexandrov Tonkov in seventh on the Yamaha. Then Thomas Covington the home hero in 8th on the just 3 points behind his Russian rival and just 2 points ahead of Ionis on the KTM, the Latvian in ninth, And then round out of top 10 is Samini Bernardini on the TM bike with 432 points. And look how close this battle is for Sif has going further down in 11th is Petrov the Bulgarian in 11th on the car. So just 2 points of a top 10 position. Then there's a bit of a gap to Monticelli in 12th on the KTM. And he's ahead of the Russian on the cars, like by three points. And we've got Jorge Zagoffa in 14th on the Honda for the four points back. He's, he's just five points ahead of the Sarakin on the KTM in 15th. Then six points further back is the Belgium Van Donnick on the Yamaha in 16th. And then Henry Jacobi in 17th on the Honda. He's quite way back behind the Belgium. He's just two points ahead of the Italian on the the Hasvana Bonini and then we've got Adam Sterry in 19th on the KTM just a further two points back and then right at the back in 20th is Alfie Smith on the Yamaha who's six points ahead of Michael Ivanov in the battle for the wooden spoon on the KTM but heading into the final round for the MXGP championship it's a 47 point lead over his Italian rival for Kev Hillman 49 ahead of the Frenchman on the Yamaha as well, he just really needs to finish in the points in the first race, and then he's won the championship. Let's see if we can do it round this undulating sandy surface, getting head in circuit. As here we are for the final round of the season, just two races to go round this magnificent circuit. Look how undulating it is. It's like that Italian circuit in the middle of the season. So that a hard surface. This has a sandy surface, and with the inclement weather. Overhead conditions. The bike should be able to dig into a couple of these corners. As let's go for a qualifying effort for the final time this season with Kev Hillman. As you've got a couple of tight corners, hairpins. Got some mounds as well. And see, that's the first of the corners with that massive rut in the middle of it. When you wide open it, that's the whole shot. Corner. Into this fast right hander. You can really use the whole of that corner if you want. And into the left hander. Kind of speed up the hill. Into another fast right hander. As now we prepare to go downhill. Look at this jumping. Into another heavily rutted corner. And oh he's into the bags. <laughs> he's into the cameraman. Hope you got that shot cameraman. Or is he voted somewhere else? As now we go uphill massively. Told you it's like this Italian circuit in the middle of the season, isn't it? The first Italian circuit we visited. It gets and Night Mantova as well as Colden off. The winner of the last round. Goes down, so there's Von Horbeck. So does Nargle. Oh, the weird gunner. Poor Hillman. It's got another massive jump. Look at this. On this back straight and now heading into the final section got this right hander with the jump again right oh, you're turning into that corner so you've got to make sure you slow down a massive jump downhill into the left hander and into the right hander another switch back corner and now look at this final corner look at that massive right in the middle oh this pushed Hillman into no man's land as in this, like he's going to cross the line with a 55. 55 2, I think it was. Which is not even good enough for the first page as the Frenchman grabs the final pole of the season by a couple tenths of a second out of the Savinian on the Honda with Corrodi in third on that KTM. He's right up there. 
Now we're going forth though on the Hasfar and then we've got the other Honda of Poland in fifth. Where is Hillman? In 15 for the Russian around and out the top 10 on his Honda. But the red plate in 15th on the Hasvana. 55.2 it was in the end with the Swede right at the back on his Suzuki. So the last qualifying is done of the season. Let's see if the Hillman can win the championship in the first race here in Glen Helen. As we are strapping in to what should be a roller coaster ride, not just round this circuit, but of the race as well. As we got a battle through the field, as there's Suzuki getting the TV time, the Belgium. As we up the engine alongside Towney and Trixia. And we are underway for this five that race. Oh, the dick had a horrible start. But a superb start from Hillman. Look at this. He is right in the middle of the pack. And look at the dust being pushed up into the air through that first corner. And look at this, at Nagel at the front. He's battled his way past the Frenchman as well. Hillman leads. It's Asvana 1 2 on his opening lap. Brilliant job. He's taking the wide line in his opening lap, though. That's Nagel down the inside. That's the Frenchman as well. But he gets a superb run up the hill. He's going to take back that lead into the tight right hander. Runs a bit wide, though. That was Nagel through. But it's has final one, two, just how they drew it up before the race. Nagel and Hillman leading. It was all very wide into the right hander. It was Nagel. And oh, the Italian down from 11th. What a dream opening up for the Macau rider. That's how he would have liked it before he went to sleep as all. He gets into Nagel, though. German still hasn't forgiven him for his early season battles, has he? The Savinian down from fifth, though, on the Honda. As you have the Frenchman behind in third. Let's see if that's the case at the end of this lap. But the overhead conditions, very overcast. But it's not raining, which is the most important bit. It's just looking nasty. He's gone to the second lap. And it is superb for Hillman. Superb has Varna. They'd be very thankful he didn't rain. So not the best in those conditions. Now the Frenchman's out from third. Oh, Hillman. When he goes past his crew on this lap, he will have the biggest grin in the world as he takes the lead from Nagel. Now in to the left. I wasn't sure if this circuit would match or be good for the Hasvarnas but I think it's proven to be on this second lap so once again taking that wide line because look at the run look at the momentum we get up the hill superb taking that wide line into the hairpin but he gets such a good run off the corner traction is very good around this place for Hillman. Now into this tricky right hand here. Again, you got that jump just before the apex of the corner. Just about holds onto the bike, got the exit. Like the right hander that's coming up here with this little jump before it, where you got to basically break before that jump. Use that jump to go wide, not into the crowd. Get into the outside groove, so then you can just rock it off that corner. And oh, the French is out from seventh. It's all going the hammer's way. On this second lap, on the opening lap, it was the Italian making the mistakes. Now it's the Frenchman in the second lap. As you go for that very unusual final corner. On to the third half of the race, 51-5. Why couldn't you have done that in qualifying? Hey, Hillman? Probably not listening to me. So he's using the fence and everything as he gets into Nagel. He's just in the zone in the lead. As I said, very happy how this race is going. We go towards the gun head and sign. Being a bit of a wider line into the right hander. But that's showing that Nagel's not that far off his teammate as he avoids the jump on the inside for once. Bit quicker to go round it and not take it. Go downhill. 
into the left and uh, nicely done. That is starting to get a bit rutted though. So you've got to be careful of that on these last couple of laps. It's going to again taking up wide line into that right hand. Maybe to take a tighter line in the last couple of laps. We will see. You can see some wet patches as well. So obviously rain before we got here. But it's dried up for the races and qualifying. So the Swiss rider out from fourth. Belgium out from tenth. And look at this, he's even Tony Hawking. But Charte, the Frenchman out from 14th. Another has runner out from 19th as well, the Italians. Look at this. Hillman's so happy he's grinding billboards. And oh, Van Horbeck down from 5th, the Belgium. Van Hornbeek, isn't it? To go into this big old mound. And on to the penultimate, that 50.3, despite grinding. That's how in the zone Hillman is. Sorry, messing up early on as well. Now Nago alongside him. He's taking that massive jump again. Likes that outside line. Oh, he doesn't like that mound. No, Nago takes the lead. This team as he quickly picks the bike up. And this penalty at that. And oh, the Frenchman down for 19 for oh, his Kazaki. But still, has final one and two. The team will be very happy. As I said Hillman would be gleaming. He could probably light up the world with his smile after this race. That is all Nagel's learnt from his teammate taking the outside line. Getting a decent run out of it. But not as good as Hillman, though. He almost lands on his teammate. A side by side into the hairpin. Let's go past the American flag and downhill. Look at the surroundery around it. The surrounding area. Magnificent as Hillman takes back the lead from Nagel. But oh, the German forces teammate wide. They're having some fun in the final stages of this race. Oh, and Hillman lands right in front of his German colleague. I'm not sure you can call them friends. To demonstrate with this race as the Italian on this Honda is down from 20th, as expected. Oh, the Belgium out from third. That's not expected. That's just one very ridiculous corner to go, and then we're on the final lap. This race, and look at this, the has are oh, elbow to elbow going on to it. You could not ask for a more exciting finish here. With the teammates battling. Maybe not for the Hasvana team manager. It's all the Frenchmen's down from 18th. Then we have a good jump into the mounds. Well, we have a much better set of mounds than previously. Now with the wide open stretch. Can he set up the move on his teammate here? I'm sure he wants to win the championship with a victory. I want to be sitting behind Nargle. And that's what he's trying here. He's taking a very outside line. Oh, he's switching back. Oh, it didn't work though. There is Nago in front. Oh, and now Hillman's not getting a run out of that corner, taking his line. It's too rutted on this final lap. But it looks like the German will win the battle that has Varners. A very good battle as well between the teammates. A bit over the line for the team boss. But they both survived. They're both still in first and second. That's the main thing. And Kev Hillman is about to become an MXGP champion. Even though he's just headbutted a billboard. He might even got in the podium now. Look at this, he's off the podium. What have you done, Hillman? This meant to be a Hasvana 1-2. As oh, the Swiss rider out from second. So he's back on the podium at least, but now he's got a battle for second. As oh, the Honda got taken out. It looks like. And there's Hillman trying to take back that second place. Going into the final couple of corners. Nagel wins. But who's going to grab second? Look at this elbow to elbow. He will be Hillman and the championship. 
as the Russian also crashed out in that final couple of corners. But there's your MXGP champion flying to the title. He was seven seconds behind Hargo in the end, but he doesn't care. The Townie in third on the Suzuki. Welcome to the to the season. A bit late, though. We've got Lund in fourth despite his final lap fall from second. The Russian in fifth despite his final lap fall. But then in sixth. Then the Belgium in seventh despite his fall early in the race from the podium. Karoli in eighth. A valiant fight from the KTM rider all season long. That comes to now in the end. We've Colin off in ninth. And von Horbeck in tenth ahead of the Savini was a victim on that final lap. Now for podium place. Tommy so in 12th, there's a Frenchman in 13th after numerous crashes in the middle part of the race. Alex Snow in 16th and the converted down and it's like the Frenchman on Nasvana grabbed the final point. And the Frenchman on the Kazaki with the Honda in the last. So if the championship secure, can Kev Hillman win the final race of the season as the MXGP champion? Who knows what the future will hold for the Mono... Not Monaco, Macau. Rider. But for now, let's see what he can do round Glen Helen. As his skills will get up there. As here we are lined up for the final time this season in MXGP. As for Norbeck, the Belgians get the TV time. Your champion, the Hammer, lines up. With his five at the race as it gets underway. Here, man, I believe that is Snow. Or is that the Frenchman getting a poor start? So he goes into the first corner, not quite getting a whole shot. It goes to the Italian, he gets the final whole shot of the season. There's all the Italian on the Honda. He's down already in last. Now here comes Hillman charging ahead of the Italian. Looks like we've got Van Horbeck as well. I should say cold enough is that leading or was. Because here comes Hillman. Flying into the sky and into the lead. You can really see the circuit from up here. Let's try and ride around it. Let's see if Hillman can just motor away. Who knows, this future could die in America, go over the Supercross maybe. That's been rumoured. It's the Belgium down for 17th. Has not gone well for him since he crash from a podium spot around halfway through the first race. Now he's right at the back in his second one. There's all almost losing the rear. It's Hillman and oh he's down again. <laughs> Obviously that TV time has gone to his head. The beginning. It's going to go through the final corner of ridiculousness. We cross the line onto the second lap. One of the longest circuits around the calendar. 1.8 miles roughly on this track. At least that's what it says at the beginning. There's all oh, cold enough has sneaked back by the Dutch rider. There's all the Hondas down from fifth for the Frenchman. Pull in. Oh, you can see Hillman's taken back the lead. Crowd cheering. Gonna be cheering on next season. In very different circumstances as he's won the MX2, he's won the MXGP championships now. What more can he do in Europe in this world championship? He's winning for Honda, Kazaki, Hasvana, Suzuki, KTM. He's winning for all the manufacturers as well. Not always in factories rolls like this. But has been the case. MHGP level with Honda at the beginning of the season. Remember he had that superb start to the season. Then switched over to Kazaki. Had very up and down moments with the team. Same with Asvana. But in the end he has proven to be golden on this bike. Especially in America. As there goes his teammate down. The Frenchman from 12th. Apart from the second race in America. Because well, his teammate pushed him into the scenery. I believe he was made to drink a year's supply of Rockstar after that race as punishment. So, I'm not sure if the Frenchman's actually feeling alive round or too alive round here. 
Yeah, he's certainly not having a good race. As you go into the third, that 51 5 on the opening that, not too bad. Let's go over these opening set of mounds and these huge ruts in the middle of the corner as well. Very challenging for the riders as it demonstrates there. Hillman down from the lead. He rejoins in second. But it's a good run over the mound, so he retakes the lead from the Dutchman. Now going to this very wide open space heading towards his right hander. Could almost take that flat out on an MX2 bike. Not quite an MXGP bike though. So go up the hill, trying to avoid that jump on the inside, but clipped it. And you see that pushed him wide. Almost allowed the Dutchman to retake the ease as you go downhill. Halfway through this race. Really using that bank on the outside. Superb run uphill for Hillman. Now into the right hand. You can see taking a bit more of an inside line this time in like the first race. Seems to be working better as well. And now we're really taking an inside line into that left hander. Don't want to be doing that. Do into the right hander though. Down to first gear. Nailed a follow over this massive jump. We've got good set of jumps here. Good run. This is the most annoying one of them though. Into the right hander. But it seems like he's re-established his lead over Van Horbeck. Were some people just standing on that grandstand on the inside? As all the Italians crash from fifth. Van Horbeck though from fourth. Nagel from sixth. There's been a pole up behind. Oh, the Swiss rider down to 14th. Let's say Van Hoor, but I mean, cold enough in second, isn't he? The Dutchman. Is he going to the penultimate lap of the season? What a season it's been for Ilman. Number of it, he's very up and down, particularly down at the end of the European season. But he's picked it up again. He's in America. Picked it up when he's needed to this season. He had a bit of a poor run before Belgium. Round the final third of the season, then grab the maximum there. It's going to virtually grab the maximum here and get an head in as well after finishing second in the opening race. And it looks like he's charging towards victory in what could be his final XGP race. And it says his future's up in the air after this 2016 season. You know, it goes downhill. I see out the corner just about staying on the track surface there. But he's pushing the boundaries all the time with this bike. And of the track limits. That's nicely around the right hander on the inside. Go downhill. And into the left hander, but Yeah, when he's needed he's stepped it up this season. Oh, After such a good start of Honda, isn't it? Like he's gonna race away with the championship. Yeah, growing pain to Kazaki, but then got results on that bike, especially in the Czech Republic as well in the locket. As oh, there goes the Belden down from 12th. Oh, and there goes the leader, Hillman. Chilling out already in the bushes. Like he's drunk. That won't happen until a few hours in the early hours of the next morning. Probably. <laughs> Celebrating too early. There's all oh, Frenchman down. And 16th on the Kazaki. As oh, going on to the final half of the season, Hillman's lost the lead. From the KTM, quickly retakes it though. In the first corner of the last lap of the season. What a season it's been for MXGP. Had the old rivals as well. The old champions such as the Frenchman, such as the Italian. Battling this young up-and-comer. The MXG, MX2 champion, now the MXGP champion. For the championship. But he did turn into a battle on that last half of the season. When even at the midway point in it, like, it wouldn't be much of a championship battle. But what a way it's turned out for Hasvarna, for Hillman. I'll wait for next season. For this young guy. From Macau as well. It's known for its road racing there. Eh? Because when the Macau... GP circuit holder Macau Grand Prix for F3. Uh, so the FIA GT Cup as well in recent years. 
and the motorbike road race the Macau Grand Prix not known for the dirt this guy's come over to Europe and proven that they can be very handy on the stuff on the loose stuff as well he's got final couple of corners So he's going to end the season with a victory and an overall. Very fitting for the champion. He's always a bit right into the left hander though. Maybe we've got to watch out into the right. And into the final corner of ridiculousness. Can he survive? He can just about. As he goes out. And across the line with a massive scrub. The crowd pleaser. The champion. Kev Hillman. Wins the final round of the MHGP season in... Glen Helen. Just by less than a second of cold enough. Great ride from the Dutch. We really did end the season strongly on his KTM. The Honda in third of the Servinian. His teammate at the beginning of the season for Hillman. Quite fitting to see him on the podium. The Russian in fourth. The Italian in fifth on the KTM. Good battle all season long. Especially in that last third of the season. But came up short in, Amer in the Americas. The American rounds with the French winning sixth on the Yamaha. Then Dedeker in seventh on the Honda, finally getting a good result to Belgium. With Tommy Searle then ninth on the Kazaki. Maxi Nago in ninth on Asvana. Not as good as the opening race with Van Horbeck in tenth on the Yamaha. Ed Ben Towney, the other podium finisher in race one. With Axe, no scoring points in 17th. And all the Swede in last. Guaranteeing the wooden spoon with Jordi Trexier on the cars like he's not scoring points either. Definitely needs 9-1-1 after that race for his season. Has 47 points scored. Of course, he has 10 points ahead of his teammate. Oh, it has Varna 1-2 to end the season. Very good to see with KTM in third with Cold and often in the Russian fourth. This thing in fifth and Townie in sixth. Crowley in seventh. 18 points back. Title rival and pull in in eighth, got in ninth, and there is the Frenchman in 10th for 23 points, around half the points of Hillman in the end in the final round with Tommy Sell in the 11th and Orbit 12th, the Dickon 13th, then and the Suzuki in 14th of Kevin Nee. As I said, he was on the podium plate until halfway through that first race, and it went downhill after that. Then we got the Frenchman in 15th on the Yamaha and into Sain, 16th on the Kaz. Like he did not have a very good end to the scene. Axe now in 17th. Maddie in 18th on the Hazvana. Then the Swede in 19th. Head of the Pino in 20th. Chartier in 21st. And look at that, the Kaz. Like who'd no pass. Neil Pra to end the season in 22nd. So your final stand in sees the red plate go to Kev Hillman. 666. He was the devil. This season compared to everyone else. They just could not contain him. As he wins by 65 points. Had 2-2-2. And then 4-6-1 is in third. 73 points back. He was 31 points ahead of Maxi Naga in fourth on Asvan. And then we got Savinia in fifth. 2 4 3 in fifth of 5 3 5. Trade 7 points behind Asvana. And 38 ahead of Koldenoff in CF. Secure in that position. Secure Quite securely in the end, ahead of the Russian in seventh of Ben Rivshev, Bob Ryshev. Then we've got Desali in eighth on the Kazaki as a poor end to the season. Then we've got Van Horbeck in ninth on the Yamaha, just a single point behind his fellow countryman. And he's just six points ahead of Hulin in tenth on the Honda, who was just three points ahead. Galund in the end on the Yamaha in eleventh. Then we've got the Belgian Suzuki in 12th. In kind of no man's land in the championship as he was 88 points ahead of Tommy Sell, number 100 in 13th. He's 14 points ahead of Ben Townley. And then he was 14 points ahead of Charte in 15th on Asvana. Then we got the Frenchman in 16th for that poor end to the season. 80 points behind his fellow countryman, 6 points ahead of Ken De Digger on the Honda. And there's a bit of a gap to the Frenchman in 18, who was 17 points ahead of the Pino. And he was 18 points ahead of his fellow countryman on the Hasvana. And then there's Alex Snow, 21st, 72 points, 19 points ahead of the Swede, who gets the wooden spoon on the Suzuki. So there it is, confirmed your top three in the championship. 
and maximum reputation earned this season, of course, and credits as well. What an end to the season. Achieved all that the team wanted, that he wanted as well. And his skills just go through the roof. So I hope you enjoyed the MHGP season. Kev Hillman will be back. Will it be back in MHGP? Will it be? It must the NG Super Cross. Who knows? As Jack Fisher says, after the season, I see it couldn't be any other way. Your champion. Enjoy your win. So a hungover Kev Hillman will return soon. But I hope you enjoyed MHGP3. I have enjoyed returning to the game. It's still great fun. It has its kind of minor grites. The graphics aren't particularly fantastic. Gameplay is a bit up and down. But it's just good fun. And that's what, what more can you ask from a game. As long as you're enjoying it, as long as it's fun for you, that's all you want from a game. So, south watching and I will see you next time.